YouTube. These are some documents and photos with comments by my friend who was a witness for many years. He spends much of his time now helping those still in or leaving the organization. First, let us note that there are many good-hearted and law-abiding Jehovah's Witnesses. However, they are not that way because of the Watchtower organization, but in spite of it, its heads, and their policies that harm JWs, especially children. Many active, inactive, exiting, exited, and never JWs are rightly very concerned by what the Watchtower is doing, especially as the year 2014 approaches and then will go past. For example, back in 1994, an alarmed elder in Florida supplied this copy of a letter in which Watchtower Service Department orders that local Jehovah's Witness elders not even warn other witnesses that a man had come in from Mexico who had committed several murders and crimes in the past. Here's a copy of that letter, and you can pause and read it yourself if you like. Now for a photo passport we credit Marvin Schilmer on which now dead Watchtower President Fred Franz signed and swore that he supports the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and, and that he will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Marvin's blog at marvinshilmer.blogspot.com has passport copies of all the other Watchtower Presidents saying the same. Which description in Matthew 24 does this really match? That of a faithful and discreet slave, or of the slave counted among the hypocrites. Here's another shocker. Watchtower is a busybody in the most intimate sexual details of Jehovah's Witness married couples. It's as if their leaders stood amidst the bedsheets of a J.W. man and his wife. Would anyone knowing that this sort of thing goes on want to become a Jehovah's Witness? This letter is too embarrassing to read out loud, so you can pause the screen to check it out yourself. Here in the recent Elder's Manual, we see how Watchtower doesn't rule out even pedophiles serving as elders. Pedophiles in the organization let others know outside that Watchtower will protect and hide them. Studies are conducted with prisoners convicted of pedophilia, like Philip Garrido, who with his wife Nancy kidnapped and abused J.C. Dugard. His wife, who was a witness, got Philip to study, and in so doing helped him get out of prison early. Possibly every kingdom hall now has at least one pedophile, but elders are forbidden to warn who he is. This tells about the relevant section of the Elder's Manual with comments. If you want more information about how to fight their policy of hiding and shielding pedophiles, you can go to silentlambs.org for more information. Coming up next is a photo showing a Kingdom Hall in Olathe, Kansas, that was sold to a Buddhist association to get more money for Watchtower. Notice the idols in the parking lot. So, even some active JWs wonder, well, who is the apostate, since Watchtower so clearly idolizes money? Might it not be Watchtower itself, instead of those whom J Watch Watchtower calls names, like apostate or evil, for exposing and speaking against their idolatry? The next photo shows Lawrence Hughes at his daughter Bethany's grave. She bled to death following Watchtower's false teaching against emergency use of blood. Watchtower doesn't tell Jehovah's Witnesses 1 Samuel 14 shows that God forgave men for eating meat with blood to stay alive. Also, Christ says God wants mercy, not sacrifice. Many who study with Jehovah's Witnesses do not know Watchtower's policy of shunning, called disfellowshipping, is so extreme that people sometimes commit suicide. Watchtower has JWs tell their studies and the public that shunning is only done if people do things like smoke or have Watchtower judged inappropriate sex. However, the truth is, it also happens when JWs just peacefully dissent by word or even thought from the Watchtower. 
The 2010 Elders Manual admits also, now, even if elders believe a JW exhibits a brazen attitude. The fact is, many ex-JWs have not been spoken to by active JW family in years and even decades. One such victim is Brenda Lee, who wrote the book called Out of the Cocoon and has been on a TV documentary about cults. Watchtower disfellowships active JWs caught socializing with ex-JWs, calls ex-JWs apostates and mentally diseased, and in a 2011 magazine praised Jehu for killing apostates to champion true worship. Christ said love even enemies. Really, why join an outfit like this that even many active members don't like, if truth be told? Note that for decades, Watchtower falsely told JWs and the public that some of the generation alive in 1914 would live to see Armageddon bring God's kingdom, but in 2010 changed it to say that some JWs alive in 1914 knew some that are now living who will see those events. Does anyone really think JWs can forget such a long time mispreaching? Clear proof Watchtower indeed is a false prophet. Also, 1914 plus 100 years equals 2014. See why JWs, including fed up elders, are increasingly looking around. Likewise, Watchtower has said many false things about Christian churches. Also, misclaimed that autonomous, non Watchtower, but historically related Bible student groups don't exist or barely exist. Fact number one, all the continuous increasing abuses and misleadership by Watchtower heads against regular JWs and other people are what are destroying the Watchtower organization. Fact number two, this is not to tell JWs what they must do, but to rightly inform so that they can make their own important decisions. Best wishes, friends, and just remember, that 2014 and the years after it will soon be here. Time waits for no human or imperfect human organization.